What is up, my fellow Chibits? Hopefully all of you are having a very, very good day today. Because today, Tokyo Ghoul Re is here. Chapter 150. Titled, Ark. So, uh, I'm just gonna take an educated guess, and I'm gonna assume that this is probably a biblical reference, because we know Ishida does that type of stuff. But anyways, the chapter is here. It's not out on MS yet, so yeah, I had to go through JB, which JB... In terms of translation-wise, usually their translations could be very accurate compared to MS, so it really just take your pick, which one you actually prefer. But anyways, though, I definitely will reread the chapter once it comes out on MS, because, uh, you know, translations do vary. But anyways, though, let's get into this chapter. Hopefully all of you are having a very good day, and hopefully all of you are bundling up and staying warm, because it's, it's pretty cold. That's why I have a jacket on. Okay, so if that thing continues to operate, it'll go wild to compensate for its energy law. Okay, so we're going to continue right off after last chapter. Okay, so wait, if that thing continues to operate, it'll go wild to compensate for its energy loss. So Kaneki's losing energy? I guess it makes sense because his Kagane is outside his body, and we do know that when it comes to the Kagane coming out of the body, it's rapidly expending our C cells, so... It would make sense that Kaneki would be losing energy. Okay. An idea brought into the CCG. A long history of research to be put to the test. Okay. If the attacks are anything like this, or these, the damage could spread to the neighboring ward. No. It would take out the whole 23rd ward. Damn. What do you mean? Can you explain it to us? Nishino-san. This is the Kagane's true form. A paper crane? What? What? Okay, I'm a little bit confused. Okay, we got cover. J-Box. Okay. Origami. Yeah, I'm with him. Origami. The surface area of a paper crane is approximately 40% that of the original paper. If you unfold it like this, it turns out to be 2.5 times the size of the paper. Oh, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. A kage is like a piece of origami folded innumerable times. During the process, a vast physical structure is hidden within it. Dr. Connor calls this a collapsible structure. With that thing taking in such a tremendous number of kakuhos, there should be an unbelievable number of paper cranes with it. Okay, so we're getting a scientific understanding of why the kage is so massive. It grows in size proportionate, proportional to the number of cockahoes it's consumed, or so. That's how I've come to understand it. Yes. What should we do? Okay. Whoa. Okay. Let me back up real quick. Let, let me let me analyze this real quick. So. So the reason why Kaneki's, you know, uh, Kagane is so big, which we already knew, is because he, you know, absorbed all of the Ogai and all that, he ate all of them, and, you know, he consumed their Kakuhos and RC cells, which in turn, it made the mass of his RC cells a whole lot more, and dens uh, density and all of that, so when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. This is just giving it a little bit more of a simpler term, letting us know it's like a a paper crane or origami. You know how when you see an origami, the paper crane, only 40% you see on the surface, but inside there's just a whole lot. It's kind of like how our planet Earth is when you think about it. Like we see the surface, but then the inside there's just so much more to it. That's kind of what's going on here. Also, I wonder if Ishida's making an analogy to a parasite as well. Um, I don't know if I'm, you know, reading this wrong or thinking about it wrong, but let me give my example what I mean. Um, have any of you ever heard of, like, those parasites that live, like, in bugs or ants or grasshoppers or whatever? There's YouTube videos on it. I mean, you can check it out. Just type in, like, parasite coming out of an ant or grasshopper or whatever. I know it's disgusting. Many of you might not want to look that up. It, it's pretty, it's pretty disturbing. But, I mean, if you know about that type of stuff, parasites and how they come out of, like, insects or something, that's kind of what this reminds me of. What is being explained here is that... You have this creature, whatever, inside of Kaneki or, or any ghoul, and when it's, you know, coming out, it expands quite large. There's just a lot to it compared to what you actually see, and that's kind of how I feel like it is. You have, like, the parasite within, and when it comes out, it expands a lot more, which is, like, the entire length of, like, a parasite, where it can be, like, 
you know, many, many feet, even though inside of it doesn't look like you'd be feet inside of like a tiny little bug or something. So maybe that's kind of what's going on here, just because it's, you know, folded around like a piece of yarn or something, and that's what's happening here. But I don't know if Ashida meant it like that, but that's kind of like the term I get here, and to make it like kind of simple. And I've always fought like, you know, RC cells and the Kako and stuff is like some form of parasite. I've always fought it was. I mean, I've talked about this before, sentient, you know, RC cells, Cognate and all that, and I mean... I've always thought maybe the RC cells could be some form of parasite as well. Who knows? But, uh, yeah. That's what I get from that. Maybe it's because I've been watching too many, uh, educational videos recently on YouTube. But, okay, let me carry on. What should we do? The affected area is huge. Oh, man, that devastation. You just see the cognate all throughout the city. Okay, but within that perimeter, there should be a body from which it originates. A.K.A. Kaneki. If we take out the main body, the Kagane will start to break down. Because it's the origin. It's like the, the hive mind of the RC cells where the main original Kakoho is, so it does make sense. However, this is going to be like finding a needle in a haystack. But there's no other way, is there? We could just wait until it dies out on its own naturally. Dr. Kano thought that RC cells gener uh, generally maintain a structure similar to telomeres. In other words, Kagane have a finite number of times they can divide. Okay, this is what, you know, Nishiki let us know. It makes a lot of sense that Kimi would know this as well. Maybe this is how Nishiki knows is through Kimi. Oh, he might have gotten a little bit from information from her. Huh. Kagane have a finite number of times they can divide like typical cells. They, the Hayflick limit... If the gigantic thing exceeds that limit, it'll start to fall apart. But how long will it take until it reaches that point? So Kaneki will start to fall apart. But no, see, what we found out, though, is that if Kaneki continuously consumed RC cells, he would live for a very long time. And I'm going to assume that with how much he's already eaten in terms of the Yogi and all that, he's going to live for a very long time. That limit's probably gigantic. I, I, I'm going to assume, like, at least... 500 years, I, I, I want to assume that's what it's going to be, but how long will it take? Because, I mean, think about it. the original one Eye King, you know, is still around, at least the... Wait a minute, if the, the Kako... If the Kagane is still there, from what I'm seeing from this analysis, what Kimi is saying, if the Kagane is still there, that means that the original body would still be alive, so that would mean that the original one Eye King is still around. He's not dead. Well, we just got confirmation that the one eye king is not dead if the body is still around. Because it would have deteriorated if it, the main body died. So that would mean that the original one eye king is definitely still alive. Ayato, you need to give me some information, man. Holy crap. Okay, um, how long will it take until it reaches that point? That's what my guess is 200 years. Really? I, I figured it'd actually be a lot longer than that. I figured it'd be around 500, maybe 600 years, especially with how much Kaneki devoured. Um, it's been about 100 years? It's been, yeah, has it hasn't been about 100 years since the One-Eyed King went on a rampage? Let me see. Um, Tokyo Ghoul One-Eyed King. It, it's been 100 years, hasn't it? I could have swore. It, it's been at least 100 years. So, 200 years for Kaneki, so... There's a mysterious freaking Tokyo Ghoul universe, and reality how the king is revealed. Okay, I don't care. I know how the titles form and all that. Um, I uh, don't see information. I could have swore it was 100 years. I don't see it on the wiki page, but I could have sworn it was 100 years ago. Hmm. I don't see it, but I, I'm just going by what I remember. I believe it's 100 years ago that the One-Eyed King... You know, I did an uprising and was put to an end, stopped by the Washu clan and all that. So, if Kaneki is going to live for 200 years, if nothing is done, if he lives for 200 years and they leave him be and he doesn't consume any more people, there'd be 200 years. That's pretty long, but it makes you wonder for the original One Eye King, it's already been 100 years, how much time does he have left? How much did he consume? Did he consume more than Kaneki? That is the question. From what we know, underground, like deep underground, there's just this big mass. So for all we know, he could be a lot larger than Kaneki. Hmm. That's interesting, but the main body is still alive, though. Okay, it will take at least 200 years for that thing to dissolve. <sighs> Looks like our only choice is to find the main body. 
So what's this main body look like? Lardude san. We're in trouble. Where's all the commotion, Lardude, inside the gate? Like, what's going on? What? What are they here for? What the hell are you guys doing? Hurry up and... What? Whoa, 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 whoa. All of these ghouls have just popped up at CCG's front... What? Okay. Okay. Huh. There's Hide, Akira, and Amon. So they led the ghouls to CC. That's not gonna be good. That's. Uh, 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 Hide, you're a good man. Amon, you're a good man. Akira, you're a good man. But still. Akira's not a good man. She's a good girl. I don't know why I just said that. But, anyways, you're all good characters. Got a lot of sway, but. <sighs> I don't know how uh, that's not gonna end well for ghouls being oh there's Toka there's her mask there's Misa there's Nishiki Suki oh. well everybody's there Nagachika what are you hey Almond isn't that Almond Kutaro Almond it's really oh yeah everybody thinks he's dead huh. didn't he die in the line of duty in the 20th ward Nagachika what what the hell are you doing Somebody bring my higher mind to me. <laughs> bring my higher mind to me. Oh, good. Let's see. We brought people who would help. Kimi-san already told us this, but don't we have to dig up the main body of... Wait, Kimi-san already told us this. But don't we have to dig up the main body of that thing? Okay, so we already talked to Kimi about this. But there are limits to humans. There needs to be some flexibility. Flexibility, are you seriously telling me to work? Wait, is he asking the ghouls? To Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, and this is so much to just comprehend. I, 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 I'm just absolutely stunned what's going on right now. Like, this is, this is a monumental moment. Like, I am legit just flabbergasted with what I am witnessing right now in this chapter. Like, I, I don't know how to take it all in. So, just to analyze here, the ghouls have just popped up to CCG's doorstep. He day. Akira and Almon are leading the charge, being the voice of reason. Then, Kimi filled in, you know, Hide, and Hide explained everything to the ghouls already, I'm assuming. And, basically what's going on here is Hide's like, there are limits to humans, you know. We can't, you know, have a lot of power to dig things up. You know, humanity will probably need ghouls. And Marde's like, tell me to work with... So, are we having a bridge? Like, is there a bridge being built right now? Is there a legit bridge... Okay, let me just see where this is going to go. I'm just... Okay, next page. Yes. <laughs> the way the man delivers that, yes. The thing's true form is Kaneki Kin. It's for him. These people will cooperate. If it's for him, these people will cooperate. So that's why they're there, because of Kaneki. Kaneki Kin, the one-eyed king... My man. Oh, Psycho's adorable. My man! Wasn't he executed, though? Oh, yeah, they all thought he died, too. Hmm. Th wasn't he executed, though? There were rumors that people had seen him. I don't know what to believe anymore. They're starting to realize that the media was lying to him. Is there anyone here to explain all of this? Where's the bureau director when you need him? The bureau director has stepped down. Is that Kuri and Hitako? Okay. It's kind of sad to me that Zero Squad's gone. They're dead. That saddens me a lot. To see here to go just up there with just Kuri and all that and just one of the Zero Squad members. That's sad. Anyways, uh, okay, so Furta stepped down. He used the CCG for his own person. He quit? What the hell? Why is Hiroko here? The only reason he executed Kaneki Kim was to gain your trust. The bro Wait, are they learning... Oh my, okay, there's just so much going on right now. Like, I just need to, 
I need to process, like, what am I reading? Oh my... Okay, 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 oh... Um, I'm seeing a bridge being built here. I, I, I'm seeing the CCG finding out the truth. He used the CCG for his own personal gain. The only reason he executed Konaki was to gain your trust. The road director's agent or agenda was to give birth to that thing through his top secret plan taking place underground. We were all blinded by his craftiness. Heriko-san was also one of his victims. So that was what really happened. But this is what I come back to. Ghouls working with the CCG. And even Marta Day and Almond have somehow come back to life. <laughs> if that's the case, I want Artema and Hairu to come. Oh. That's kind of sad. That's kind of sad. Artema and Hairu to come back. So you're... So you there with Almond. You're going to dig out Kaneki Kin alongside the CCG, no less. Who in their right mind would believe that an investigator would team up with a ghoul? Look at everyone's face. Yeah, that's... Yeah, I mean, there's just no way. Look at everyone's face. Why would you even bother asking? It's impossible to work together no matter the circumstances, no matter how effective it might be. Yeah, there, there's just such a big cycle between all of them. They've all hurt each other. I mean, a lot of things that CCG, uh, CCG has done is just heinous, but ghouls, in turn, have done a lot of heinous things. It's not just one side that is bad. It, both sides are, have done some really horrendous stuff and good things as well. So it would be hard to drop that. And it's impossible to work together no matter the circumstances, no matter how effective it might be. Right, Marta Day? Leave before you all get killed. Or did you want to get killed right here? Superior Officer, officer Kuri. Do you know what the most important thing to an investigator is? Exterminating ghouls. That's what I would assume. Wrong. Huh? The ghoul countermeasure law preface. The thing of most important value is peace. And the countermeasure members will put full effort in maintaining that. One who fights in order to protect the, pe the peace, that's an investigator. We have to fight even with ghouls. I will accept... You're so adorable. Oh, that's so adorable. She raised her hand. I accept them. I will accept that. This is all. I love her. I love her. Psycho is just so. She's so adorable. Next page. Oh, that face. That face is. That face is great. I, as an investigator, will fight alongside ghouls. She just. Oh, my God. Yo, I love Psycho. She's so adorable. She's so adorable. I love her so much. I, as an investigator, will fight alongside ghouls. She's looking at Almond because, you know, they fought. That's, that, oh my, this is so good. As a Kohai, I shall follow my senpai. <laughs> he sounds also raising your hand back there. Marade san, I heard that you were the kind to even use old women. Oh, wow. Uri, <laughs> you, play, you playing that, man. What? Well, cut that out. Even in this situation, working with ghouls, Marde, there's no need to dignify them with a listening ear. They're the enemy, that's right. The pride of the CCG will... Oh my god. Do I... my face right now it, it the left side of CCG. What like the, the left panel what, what what's going on with CCG? That, that that's my face. Like they just removed their map. There's no going back from that. They just threw their mask into the air. 
So basically what it's saying is we no longer need to hide. We no longer need to wear a mask. They're taking a step forward onto the bridge. They're meeting CCG halfway. But the thing is, is will CCG grab their hand? That's the question. Wow. All these individuals that Kaneki has affected one way or another. And how he inspires them and what they do for him. Wow. Pride. Oh, Toka's mentioning pride. Pride. What a low. Yo! 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 Yo, 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 yo,
And I really like how Toka's like leading the charge for the ghoul side. I, I really like that, by the way. How she's basically like the face of, you know, the ghoul side right now. That makes me very happy. That, that legit makes me very happy. When I look at this chapter, th this is kind of what I get when I look at these characters, okay? L let me just back up. We, we have people that have been on both sides. Let's look at this, okay? Almond has started off as an investigator and knows. He knows what it is. Akuda has also seen now. She has changed quite a bit. And Hide, he's always been on Kaneki's side. He always has known. He's been understanding. These individuals have been on both sides and understand both sides of the world. And so it's obvious that these, you know, three individuals would be the ones to make the two join hands, put their hands together. And that's what you get. Very nice. Very nice. Very, very nice chapter of Tokyo Ghoul. Man. The series might end soon. It might end soon. We got peace. Peace has been achieved for Tokyo Ghoul. I'm not even joking. This, this legit could end. 10 chapters, 20 chapters. I mean, there's a lot to be answered. I mean, if I'm thinking about what needs to be answered, we have the clown situation because the clowns, they like chaos. And so peace is not necessarily what they want. And so, yeah. And also Roma, for a fact, Roma is not completely dead. There's just no way Roma is dead. There, there, there's definitely more to Roma. So even then though, the clowns are a big thing about the story. But on top of that, we got to remember, you know, V. Even though the Washus have been basically wiped out, V is still around. V is still there in some shape or form, at least in other countries probably too, Germany and stuff. And so it makes you wonder if uh, once all this is settled, will this now turn into like trying to change the policies of other places around the world? Because right now this is Tokyo Ghoul and it's, it even states in this chapter Tokyo will be reborn. I wonder if she is going to call, if we did get a part three Tokyo Reborn or something, that'd be pretty cool. Tokyo Ghoul Reborn. Re. Really, Ashid? I just realized that. Tokyo Ghoul Reborn. That, 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 that's pretty good. I, I give that. But anyways, though, uh. Makes me wonder. I mean, there, there is still things that need to be answered, but I mean, it can easily be settled depending on how Shida takes the next 10 to 20 chapters, honestly. This series could legit end in 10 to 20 chapters, depending on how Shida writes it. So, it's interesting when you think about it like that. But, uh, if it does end, I'm going to be sad to see it go, but all good things must eventually come to an end. No matter how good it is or how bad it is, everything comes to an end eventually. Whether we want want it to or not. And the more I see the events of these latest chapters, the more I think that we're probably getting closer to that conclusion. Unless uh, we're going to get an after story showcasing Kaneki's child if it is born. What's going on with the child in that life. And also, uh, if he wants to focus on, he can focus on changing policies around other places in the world. That could be a big thing that Ishida could focus on. But for now though, that's basically it. So there's my thoughts of this chapter. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this chapter, how do you feel about peace at last? Man. So if you enjoyed my content, please subscribe. And if you like this video, please leave a like. And if you don't like this video, well, as I always say, leave a dislike. Because if you don't like me, I understand. I won't fault you for it. So I love you guys. Please be safe. Chibi out.